Welcome to Banking and Consumer Affairs, where banking, banks are failing all over the country, but this committee will never fail you. And we're glad that you're here today. And uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Representatives Barrett, here. Bricken, here. Camper, here. Faison, Garrett, here. Lynn, here. Sparks, here. Vaughn, here. Chairman Powers. Here. Chairman Powers, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, first of all, I've got a, an announcement to make. We are calling our final calendar will be next week, March the fifteenth at three thirty. Uh, the last day to put bills on. I'm sorry, the twenty first. Uh, last day to put bills on notice will be tomorrow, March the fifteenth at three thirty p.m. Final calendar will be heard on March the twenty first. And we have some housekeeping to do. Before we begin, here we go. Uh, item number one, House Bill 1518 by Representative Shaw has been taken off notice. Item number four, House Bill 950 by Chairman Boyd has been taken off notice. Item number five, House Bill 528 by Representative Thompson has been rolled one week. Item number 10, uh, House Bill 846 by Representative Fritz will be rolled one week. Item number 11 by Representative Fritz has been taken off notice. Item number 14, Representative Baird has been rolled one week. And that's all. And now, are there any personal orders by anybody on the committee? Um, no personal orders. We're going to take a couple of people out of notice because they've, they've got to be in another committee real quick. Uh, so we're going to go to item number three. Um, House uh, Bill 406 by Representative Reedy. I need a motion and a second. second. We have a motion and a second. Representative Reedy, you have one amendment filed. What number do you have on there? That drafting code, Mr. Chairman, is 5567. Okay, that's not what I have, but we'll keep looking. Hang on just a moment. Oh, the one that you have is 4612. And, and if, if I could speak to that, Mr. Chairman, the, the uh, 5567 was a technical correction, and of course I was told it was untimely filed. It's, it's, I can roll the bill, uh, the will of the committee, or we could just share that technical and, and see if you want to move forward with it. Uh, you let me know. I'll be at the will of the committee. Okay. It's just a technical correction? Y it, yes, okay. sir, it is. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, let's go ahead and put the other amendment on the okay. bill, House Bill 40, uh, 4612, and the technical amendment can go on in full committee. Okay. Will that you do work. that? Will that work for you? Okay. So uh, on, this, on amendment 4612, let's proceed with that amendment. Uh, do I have a motion on the amendment? And uh, do I have a second? We've got a motion and a second. Okay, you're recognized on um, the amendment uh, 4612. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. And where I was at last week in the same committee requires a financing company doing business in the state to provide on its mailed or emailed statements to a consumer a conspicuously displayed telephone number that a consumer may contact for services uh, establishes a violation of such in an unfair or deceptive act or practice under the Consumer Protection Act of 1977. Okay, and uh, thank you for that. Are there any questions for the sponsor? Chairman Vaughn, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to tell Representative Reedy that I appreciate him rolling this bill because you know how it is whenever you get a lot of things rolling and you get confused? I got confused last week, and I asked him if he would roll the bill, and he graciously did so, and I accept. I appreciate that very, very much. So thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, sir. And don't worry about being confused. We, we all get older. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions for the sponsor? Okay. 
I'm sorry, Leader Camper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is only if they do mailings, like you have some digital only platforms. This is not right. well, the digital only platforms, correct? Thank, thank you, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Lee. And, and it, yes, what we're finding out, and the bill uh, originates with a Senate sponsor, and we're finding our elderly folks are getting stuff in the mail, and they've got a question or concern, and there's no phone number to contact them to, to, to ask why or to voice their, their concerns. Leader Camper. I was saying thank you. Any other questions for the sponsor? Okay, if none, uh, without objection, we're gonna vote on House Bill 406 as amended. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, House Bill 406, you're going to Commerce Bull. Thank you. Where did, uh... Okay, uh, going out of order again. Okay, we're going to go out of order again, too, for Chairman Moon, uh, without objection. Uh, item number six by Chairman Moon. Motion. And is there an amendment? And there is one amendment, Chairman Moon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the amendment number is 5232. 5232. Okay, all in favor of putting amendment number 5232 on the bill, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? It's on the bill. Would you please uh, go on and explain the bill? Thank as you, amended. Mr. Chairman. House Bill 774, as amended, this bill would add to existing portions of Tennessee law that already prohibit local governments from imposing mandates on private businesses relative to issues such as leave policies, health benefits, wages, and scheduling. This bill adds to those further restricting local government from imposing mandates regulating employee output, hours, employee benefits, and thus preventing a patchwork of different mandates from being established in Tennessee. This will ensure that the state remains responsible for worksite over, workforce oversight. Okay, and uh, any questions for the sponsor? Leader Kim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, with respect to this bill, how would this impact when a local government decide they want to give some type of incentive to a business to come and they have some language in there that they would want them to adhere to um, water clawbacks and things like that. Can they have language in, you know, if, if it's taxpayer dollars that they're getting this incentive to come, could we have any leverage here or would this uh, impact our ability to do that? It, it would. Im Chairman thank, you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Apologize. <laughs> this, this would impact that. And, you know, Tennessee's long established, uh, we don't try to get in the way, local government wouldn't try to get in the way of businesses and the employee. But you know, there's a large, there's a significant amount of uh, regulation that's already, you know, in force, um, uh, including but not uh, limited to Fair Labor Standards Act, the Davis Bacon Act, uh, McNamara O'Hara Service Contract Act, Migrant and Seasonal Agricultural Protection Act, Contract Work Hours and Safety Standards Act, Copeland Anti Kickback Act. 
there, there is a significant amount of legislation at the state and federal, especially at the federal level, that um, you know, regulates the output and the benefits of, of um, companies and their employees. I, I hope that answers your question, Madam Leader. Leader Kemper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It does to some degree, but I'm thinking about, you know, we've had um, an initiative in Shelby, in Shelby County where we were trying to incentivize businesses to come in and clean up brownfields, and they would get an incentive to hire people. They, they'd have to hire uh, people from that area. They'd have to maybe have a, a minimal, uh, a, a, a livable wage and some, you know, other particular things if they were to come in, clean for Brownfield, turn it around, stay in the community. And I'm, I think this could impact that. So that's really why I'm asking this question, because we're trying to do something with these Brownfields before the governor put money in this current budget. This is something we've been trying to do. But and I think this, this bill may Mann. impact it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And leader, most of the time that's going to be through ECD and fast tracking. And that is going to be an agreement negotiated by the locals and ECD, the state of Tennessee. The purpose and the intent of this bill is to prevent city councils and county commissions to redefine what benefits are. And this was brought about by a municipal government on the West Coast that decided that house cleaning staff could clean only up to 3,500 square feet, and then they would be paid double time. This is the type of situation this bill is, is attempting, and it's being brought on part, part of the hotel motel, um, NFIB, Tennessee Chamber, uh, the Tennessee road builders. Uh, you know, we would hate for a jurisdiction to say, after so many uh, cross tiles were installed, then these employees are gonna have to be paid time and a half or double time during, during a normal work week. And you can imagine if that crew went from Chattanooga up to Knoxville, and Knoxville had a different set of criteria of output. So that, that's what we're trying to address in this bill, Madam Leader. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Moore. Thank you, and uh, any other questions for the sponsor? If not, we're going to be, uh, without objection, we're going to be voting on House Bill 774. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. House Chairman. House Bill 774, you move on to full commerce. Thank you, sir. And now we're going to go back to, uh, this brings us back to House, to item number two, House Bill 1434 by Representative Mitchell and I do not see Representative Mitchell, so we can roll it to the hill. Okay, uh, so roll to the hill. The next item will be, the next bill will be item number seven on the calendar, House Bill 650 by Representative McCallum. Representative McCallum, you are, we, we got a motion and a second. And um, it looks like you have an amendment on the bill. I do have a bill, Mr. Chairman. If it would be all right, I would like to roll this to the Hill, if that is okay. Uh, uh, sorry, roll this to yes. the final calendar. Okay, roll to the final calendar. Yes, that'll be fine. Thank you, sir. Okay, yes, thank you. Did you want thank to put you. the amendment on first or just? Yes, sir, I'm going to put the amendment on. Uh, well, oh, you just want to do it? Okay, we can do it on the final calendar. Can't do Can't do Let me double check. Do you, I have a, a new amendment that was written up today, so. Okay, so it's the, the okay. amendment, it's a newer amendment that wasn't filed timely, sir. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, we can just put it on at, on the next, yes, next one. This actually goes to a special calendar on the final after the final calendar, but it's on the on the same day, just uh -huh. a different name. But yes, sir. anyway, it, it's all the same. But anyway, thank you and thank you for coming. We'll roll it to then. Thank you, Special Committee Calendar. Chairman. Okay, the next bill on the calendar is House Bill 1504 by Representative Fritz. I need a motion and a second. Uh, Represent Fritz, there's no amendment on your bill that I see, so you're 
welcome to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon, committee. I bring to you uh, House Bill 1504. Um, 1504 is a piece of legislation seeking to address social media platforms and the level of transparency that is owed to all Tennesseans. Access to the internet has become an essential part of our day-to-day -day lives. Most of us can't imagine uh, life without that access today. Often referred to as the information superhighway, availability and access to that highway affects our ability to communicate with others gather information, and even gain access to the marketplace. Today, the government plays a key role in maintaining free and unencumbered access to our physical highways. Doing so ensures the rights of our citizens to travel and engage in commerce and trade. Government played the same role uh, when our current Tennessee Constitution was adopted. Uh, rivers were the superhighways of that time. Article 1, Section 29 of the Tennessee Constitution states, that an equal participation in the free navigation of the Mississippi is one of the inherent rights of citizens of this state. It cannot therefore be conceded to any prince, potentate, power or person or persons, whatever. Why is this legislation needed? It's hard to say potentate without smiling. I apologize. Uh, why is this legislation needed? To continue with my river or highway analogy briefly, if you will bear with me, Social media platforms serve as the means of moving virtual cargo on the internet, like barges move cargo on the river and trucks move cargo on the roadways. Yet some companies are permitted to set policies and engage in practices that limit the access to the information superhighway or impede the ability of some to move their virtual cargo and participate in trade, but not others. Some are impacted and some are not. Thereby, these carriers, if you will, are picking winners and losers. We've taken steps to outlaw these types of activities on the rivers and physical highways. It's time that we do the similar, similar thing on the virtual ones. So what does this legislation do? And I will, um, I'll give you a reference at, at each point where it connects to some of the bill uh, to make it a little bit easier if you would like me to. It applies the definitions necessary to implement a transparency policy, and you'll find that in the section of the bill 4734101. It outlines the boundaries of applicability of this law, and you'll find that in 102. It lays out the groundwork for transparency. You'll find that in 103, 104, and 105. And it lays a groundwork for appeals of these social media platform policies in 105 and 106. It reinforces the requirements for the virtual carriers to maintain transparency in 107 and 108 as you flip through the bill. It empowers the Attorney General to act in support of the people of Tennessee and to recover costs in 110. It necessarily expands those definitions that you see in the front part of this bill uh, to permit enforcement, and you'll find that in 473401. It prevents the censoring of expression and prevents arbitrary and unbinding waivers issued by these platforms. It prevents the abuse by users that is of criminal intention or that violates current federal law regarding obscene, lewd, or filthy content or excessive violence and content that might be harassing to others. This bill covers that. If a cargo barge or a trucking company picked up our product and then took that product and unloaded it on the side of I-40, we would have means for recourse today. I would offer to you, committee and Mr. Chair, that that's happening with the internet today and it's impacting Tennesseans. And so with that, I'll pause and take any questions you may have. Okay, do we have any questions from the committee? Uh, first one I, I have uh, on this information highway, are there any toll roads on uh, this? No, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> okay, we got uh, questions from the committee. Uh, Chairman Bricken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, to the sponsor, is this legislation a model legislation that's been adopted by any other states or 
what's uh, did this all get created from scratch here in Tennessee? So if you could help me out on the kind of the history of the legislation. Representative Fred. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's a great question. I should have mentioned that. Uh, this is a draft, as I understand it, come from a current Texas law that had passed at least one point of a, a judicial review. Um, I don't know that court that, that it had passed, but it was a draft of that. We wrestled with this. It's an extensive piece of legislation, and we wrestled with it. That seemed to be the, the uh, example that we would want to use to craft this legislation. Uh, follow up? Okay. Anyone else have a question for the sponsor? Uh, Representative Sparks. Representative Fritz, on the, on the agreements that you make, I guess, when you sign up for a social media platform, um, would this change, I guess, change that? Representative Fritz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, it would. Okay. It would, uh, it would, it would actually uh, bring about the ability that you can't sign away your rights. Okay. Yeah. Can you... Man, I sound like I'm for your legislation, I, I believe, but it, it's, a lot of this gets pretty complicated. Yes, sir. What, um, where are you seeing evidence of, of problems? I'm just, just for the record, where, where are some case, cases you can point to? Representative Fritz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, thank you for that question. Um, I'll give you one example that covers a, a couple bills that, that I uh, initiated the drafting of this year. And this one on the, the transparency, a local company in Harriman, Tennessee, um, your American flag store, um, had routine issues with being able to get the carriers, if you will, those people that provide access to the markets, the Facebooks, et cetera, uh, to get his family's products out. Uh, this family had moved here from California a few years ago and started this business and uh, found themselves uh, being a victim of some of those terms we hear in today's world of being shadow banned oh, yeah. or that their information not being readily accessible. Uh, his business has been successful in East Tennessee. The business is still up and going. It's hard to approximate how much business was lost as a result of some of those shadow banning or techniques where other people didn't see uh, the commerce uh, route that he was trying to take. But uh, this fellow is certain that he has lost money as a result of this. Yeah. Representative Spock. Because it's, I think it's real, no doubt, but from a, from a business perspective, I mean, Facebook, it's, that's their platform. You know, they're trying to monetize and make, make money. <laughs> was the guy paying for the ads or just putting information out there? Representative Fritz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a little bit of both, uh, both uh, buying uh, not only on Facebook but other platforms. Uh, and that goes to the carrier analogy that I offered to you all today. I would offer that Facebook does not own the Internet. Yeah. That it's much like our, our Mississippi River analogy in our Constitution, and that Facebook and many of these other companies become the common carriers that travel that route. Yes. And um, so he did, to answer your question directly, he did some of both on different platforms. Yes. Well, it's real, no doubt. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Leader Camper. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative, do you think that Maybe you said it's really comprehensive. I was trying to reach, read through some of it. It's about 11 pages. Uh, do you think that we might, some of them might be at risk of losing some proprietary information with the stuff that we're asking them to be transparent on and to report? Sponsor. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, no, ma'am, I do not think that there will be any loss of proprietary information. Uh, we tried to craft this bill so it would simply protect the, the small business that's, that's trying to get their product or their view out onto that marketplace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. And uh, Chairman Vaughn. Thank you, Chairman and, and Representative Fritz. You're about to be the beneficiary of my at least annual rant about the interweb, uh, particularly free services like you've mentioned Facebook and others, yes. and that is that whenever, it's hard for me to see, well, first off, this company was, uh, began, well, it's, it, I guess its origins are a little dubious, uh, saw a movie about it one time, uh, <laughs> about who really invented it, but uh, invented it by people who may not see the world the same way you and I do. 
But, you know, the freedom to disagree and freedom to hold your own opinions and freedom to run your business the way that you want to run it is something that's inherent. And, and I'm not afraid of people who think, see the world different me, differently than me and have different perspectives. And so whenever we're going to go into a product that is given to us to utilize by our own free choice, we don't have to click on that icon or link. Uh, people don't have to use that as part of their marketing strategy that you can just say no. You can say no to this. And so now we're going to take something that has been provided for our access and we're going to, and originally I used to get mad at people who put pictures of food on there. Used to be my biggest pet peeve. You know, I used to say Facebook was for bragging about your kids, pre pretending that you're living a life that you're not really living, and finding out who's at the funeral home or in the hospital. Uh, you know, those are like the only things that's acceptable for. Well, along came a very heated, contentious political landscape, and then things have certainly changed with regards to that. But at the core, this product was developed by someone who put it out there, and no one forces it upon us. And so as we tend to regulate, it's like somebody who, I like analogies and they don't always hit, but somebody who has decided that they want to put a basket of peaches by a, by a gate every day and let people come and take a free peach if they want it. But now all of a sudden somebody's going to say, I'm tired of peaches, I want some apples. And so you have to start, we're gonna, if you don't give us apples, we, we're not going to like you anymore and we're going to pass rules on you that you can't give away anything or you're going to have to give them underway on our terms. That is kind of what I feel about the regulations of that. I'm, I'm a free market person. That's back. We used to be about less government intervention and more free market. And in, we've seen how Twitter has changed. It used to be a, it used to be a place for. Not, well, I, I wasn't, I wasn't bold enough to be on Twitter because there, it's, it's a rough and tumble landscape. But the free market has changed its course, not government regulation, but free market and enterprise has changed its course. And so I would hate to see us because one thing, I don't. With it being, how do we geofence Tennessee? How, do, how does this patchwork of state regulatory environment, because this actually needs to be a federal matter that's handled. I, I don't, I do not um, discount the fact that shadow banning exists, but my question is, if you've got a liberal dude in Seattle or San Francisco, what do you expect he's going to do? His political views are different than mine. He's, but again, I'm using his product for free. Sure eyes wide open. Um, so I, I, that's what I struggle with. The other thing is, is that in your analogy, I don't believe that the social media web platforms are indeed the highway. To me, the highway is AWS and the other web servers and the people who provide access to the internet, not the actual sites. I, I see the sites as being stops along the highway that you can either stop at or not. And so I struggle with this from being a free market kind of person who thinks that, that regardless of whether or not we're win that argument's winning at the current time, because I know that, hey, everybody's mad as they could be at Facebook back in, particularly in 2022. <laughs> but the market has the ability, in my mind, you lessen government regulation and you will get the free market's impact eventually. That's, that's my perspective. And, and this seems like it goes in the other way. And I know that it's been held up in the courts. Uh, well, it was kind of held up in Texas. It was just, they didn't, they didn't grant an injunction, but they they didn't really explain themselves. And, and we know that it's failed in Florida uh, or has been overturned. I believe the Florida one has been overturned on one of the circuit courts. And so this is ultimately going to be decided in the court system. Uh, and so I would just, I can't support your bill for all of those reasons. I don't deny the existence of it, but, but I do know that the free market has created other access points 
Uh, let's see, uh, Truth Social, Gitter, whichever, what all that kind of. There's there's five or six different ones that are, that are out there, and so maybe maybe I was wrong. I'm sorry. Maybe I was confused again. Um, and so I understand how this could be a populist issue because they are so unlikable. <laughs> and so, but, but I just, I just, it just goes against my tenets of the way that I, I, I see the world and I think that commerce should act. And so uh, with that, I'll, I'll, I just want you to know why I can't support your bill. Sure. I'm, there may be other, plenty of others to do so, but that's just my own perspective. Representative Fritz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I appreciate the straight for I too. I think we agree on on those things for the most part. Some of this may be my misexplanation, so I'll, I'll try to cover that. The first point I would make is I too am a free market person, but I think certainly we have a responsibility to prevent businesses from practicing deceptive policies, where that they deceive people into things. And I think that's occurring with some of the shadow banks. And I, I would offer there that this is where our responsibility to the people to stand up and, and say to those companies who may be performing deceptively that we need additional transparency. Um, so so I, I'll offer that. And then secondly, if I miscommunicated, I, I do think the Internet itself is the highway. I see these... Um, uh, these browser companies from Google to PayPal to... Uh, Twitter, all as carriers of that information. They become easy access for us in a virtual world where we can step onto and then step off of uh, those platforms. And I think they fill the role of that carrier in the analogy. So I may have miscommunicated that. Thank you. Okay. Follow up. And, uh, oh. So this is the point in the proceedings where I take the counterpoint to Chairman Vaughn's <laughs> position. And I'm going to go down the road with you on this analogy, uh, no pun intended about road. But if you go back to the dawn of time when here in America, we started with trails and pathways that were lightly traveled and it wasn't a big issue. We didn't have to have all these rules about uh, how things, how these roads were to be used, but as the roads continued to grow and our population continued, continued to grow and use became more and more uh, trafficked and we started having congestion issues that, that maybe caused us to have to think about different ways of, of governing, that's when we have to step in to make sure that we have rules of the road so that the people that are using this free service know what the rules are, how it has to be, uh, how everyone has to act while they're using it so that we don't have mass chaos. Um, so I, I appreciate what you're trying to do with this legislation and trying to bring some sort of order to the chaos of the interwebs. Um, it, it, it is a... It's a monumental task, I think, that's been tried by, by many before and probably will be tried by many after. Um, but I think this is a good start. I appreciate what you're trying to do with it. And so I will support your bill. All right. Thank you. And uh, Representative Fritz. I, I would just offer one other thought and try to be concise with it. I, I found myself pondering, why did we write this into our Constitution? Why did we suggest that we wouldn't allow out that word, I love it, potentate? I would offer that perhaps some of the social media giants, these multi-billion dollar, multinational companies are the potentates of today. And I ask myself the question, why did we find it necessary to write into our state constitution about Mississippi? Why not the Tennessee? Why not the clinch? Why not the access to the Ohio to get to the Mississippi? And I found myself resting on this, and I'm no, certainly I'm a country boy, I'm no constitutional scholar. But uh, I found myself resting on the, uh, the fact that that Mississippi River was the gateway to the world. And um, I think our founders were so impressed that we needed for agriculture and commerce, our great seal, that we had to guarantee our access, access to the Mississippi for all of us 
It's one of the most inclusive statements, I think, made in the entire Tennessee Constitution. And so with that, I would offer, I appreciate your all's time, and I would ask for your support of this bill. I think it's very much needed, and thank you so much. Uh, thank you. By the way, I looked up the word potentate a minute ago while you were talking. Uh, Representative Lynn, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On some aspects, I find myself agreeing with our chairman. Um, it is voluntary use, and I find myself agreeing with um, the sponsor because there's, yeah, there's a lot of deception. And um, I find myself agreeing with Representative Barrett because we do need rules of the road. But the one thing, um, you know, you mentioned that they're multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar companies, and they get to be that way, not just from the advertising, but they use what we say, even what we say in our emails, to sell and make money off of us. So even though we're not paying for the use with a check or a credit card or cash, we're, we're, we're contributing. We're contributing voluntarily, you know, um, but we are paying. And so as payers, you know, do we not deserve some transparency? And um, I, I kind of feel like we do. I mean, I, you know, a way like this, I'm, I'm like tipping this way, that way, this way, and I, I really kind of feel like we do. It's really gone so far, and it's, it's gone too far. And I think I, I said last week on another bill, we have to protect the little guy. Uh, yeah, this is about the little guy and those huge uh, billion, million dollar companies. Um, making a lot of money off of us, what we say and do and our pictures and we, even what you write in a private message. So thank you. I, I think I will support this as well. Thank you. Back to you. Okay. Uh, Representative Sparks. Well, I, I love this discussion because I think we need it. Um, I don't even know if your bill, it, it, I mean, this is all, this is all federal government that we're dealing with when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. I mean, from what I know, um, I say let's move the bill out just for discussion um, because you, you, uh, the chairman mentioned Truth Social. I've never even been on that platform, and I think it's owned by Donald Trump. I voted for Donald Trump, for, for the record, but they only have 1.7 users that I see or visitors compared to Facebook's 2.96 billion. So that's not really competition in a sense, but it's it, it's a private company. Um, I think I do think shadow banning is real from political perspective. I had a campaign about four years ago, and I had a lady that was she was Miss America 1983 helping me, and she said she said you know Brenda uh, Math is her name. She said boy your your stuff being shadow banned right in the middle of an election, shadow banning is real, but like the chairman said it's it's a private owned company, free market. But it's almost gotten to be a monopoly, if you, if you will, and it's almost got to be a utility. I'm not saying you have to have it, but it's almost like it's a necessary evil. I mean, I shared the prayer breakfast this morning on on Facebook. Now, do I have to do that? No, I don't have to. I just wish there was more competition. But I like this discussion. I mean, maybe it won't go anywhere. I say let's move the bill out to full committee so we have more bright minds like Chairman Vaughn and Johnny Garrett and some others that could discuss this and kill it in the full committee. Thank you. <laughs> Representative Garrett, your name was mentioned, so you've got the mic if you need it. Okay, Representative Fritz, back to you. Do you have a comment? Okay, let me let me just mention a couple of things too, and, and um, I know you're probably familiar with this. On uh, the Section 230, uh, the investigations that are going on right now, we uh, and it's at a, at a federal level. Do you think that there's any chance that that's going to be reformed at the federal level? Because, uh, like Representative Sparks said, this is an interstate commerce commission thing, almost. You know, because we're we're dealing with uh, all 50 states. So, do you think anything, any kind of reform that they're doing, or anything that's going to be, I know, it's a case in front of the Supreme Court that'll be brought up later this year. So do you think either one of those are, are going to be uh, able to resolve the problem? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am hopeful there, and hope is certainly not a course of action. 
but uh, I do think it's a necessary first step and a course of action. I, I know in a conversation last summer with Senator Haggerty, this is high on his list of things that Section 230 that he wants to accomplish. And while this certainly touches onto those boundaries of the federal, I, I would again offer that this is very much about deceptive business practices toward Tennesseans. And the folks in Florida and even the ones in Texas, I, I, I'm supportive of them, but I'm, I'm just worried about the deceptive practices in Tennessee. And I, I think this is a good first step to start uh, addressing that. Um, any other questions for the sponsor? At all? Okay, I guess we're ready to vote. So uh, we're voting on, I'm sorry, we do have a question. Have, Leader Camper, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was trying to talk to this legal mind back here that maybe he could help me out, and he told me to ask the sponsor. So under the portion of your um, bill that deals with the complaint system, it says here that um, once the platform received this notice of what they believe is illegal content or activity, that the platform must make a good faith effort to evaluate the legality of the content within 48 hours. And so I'm thinking if there are several of these coming in and within 48 hours they're required to do that. How, how can we assure that this is, what is the enforcement mechanism here? And would that be like uh, a cost to the business to have to do? Representative Fritz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. That is a great question. It's something I did consider as we pulled this together because I certainly don't want to infringe upon those carriers, whomever they may be. We've talked a lot about Facebook, but I think it's it's really all those that give us access, including the true social, social that we've mentioned, that this should apply to. And, and in the boundaries of this bill, it talks about size and location of the of the company as to who is, who is applied under this. I, I think that the first part of that question uh, regarding uh, how do we enforce this. I think it becomes that action that helps ensure and perhaps motivate those carriers not to discriminate against folks that they have a differing opinion on. And I think that wording helps with that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions before... Okay, uh, so without objection, we're going to be voting on House Bill 1504. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Mm, close. We're going to have to have a roll call vote. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Representative Barrett? Aye. Barrett votes aye. Representative Bricken? No. Bricken votes no. Representative Camper? Camper votes no. Representative Faison? Representative Faison votes no. Representative Garrett? No. Representative Garrett votes no. Representative Lynn? Aye. Representative Lynn votes aye. Representative Sparks? Yes. Representative Sparks votes aye. Representative Vaughn? No. Representative Vaughn votes no. Chairman Powers? Aye. Chairman Powers votes aye. Four eyes and five no's. Bill fails. Okay. Sorry. Thank you, Thank you for your work on this. The bill fell. Thank you. Committee. There were four eyes and five no's. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you have another one up too, right here. Uh, I'm trying to get our calendar ready. Okay, the next one up is item number nine, uh, House Bill 965 by Fritz. I need a motion and a second. Represent Fritz, I see you've got a uh, traveling with an amendment. What amendment do you have on there? 
I have uh, Amendment 5540, Mr. Chairman. Okay, that's what I have, and uh, the amendment makes the bill, correct? It does, yes, sir. Okay, uh, do we have a motion and a second on the I'm sorry. I know, I, it was on here, I saw it traveling, I, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, the amendment's not actually traveling with the bill, my fault. The amendment makes the bill. The amendment makes the bill, though. Yes, yeah. sir. So we're, we're voting on the amendment. Uh, do I need a motion and a second on the amendment? We get one. Okay, all in favor say aye. aye. All opposed. The amendment goes on. Uh, looks like we have some testimony today on this one. Uh, uh, Mr. Todd Staley, would you please come up and introduce yourself? And Mr. Chairman, if yes. I may, I'm going to ask to roll this bill for one week, if I could, to work with some of the other folks to, uh, now that we've got the amendment on it, okay. uh, to see if we can reach resolution on some of this, um, okay. with your permission. That Yes, that's fine. And Mr. Staley, would you want to wait till next week then to, okay. Uh, without objection, we're going to roll for one week to, that'll be the final calendar. Do I need to say that about the other calendar? No, final calendar. <laughs> uh, without objection, for well, one week. Thank you. Okay, the next bill on the calendar is uh, House Bill 1185 by Representative Garrett. Need a motion and a second. Need a motion and a second on rep. Okay, got a motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, wow. <laughs> this is a tough crowd here tonight. Um, okay, and you have an amendment, uh, Representative Garrett. I believe. That amendment code ends in 5009, Mr. Yes. Chairman. And the amendment makes the bill, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I have a motion and a second on the amendment. Motion. Okay. okay, got a motion and a second on the amendment, and uh, the amendment goes on, and uh, please describe the bill with the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chairman. House Bill 1185, as amended, is, I believe, my fifth time to carry uh, the trust legislation for the Tennessee Bankers Association. They have a very distinct panel that addresses our trust legislation here in the state of Tennessee and in conjunction with their recommendations and in partnership with our General Assembly, uh, believe it or not, over the past seven years, uh, trust companies are coming here. We've gone from, in that seven years, from 25 billion uh, in management under trust to $250 billion in trust due to the great work of our General Assembly to constantly touch, uh, amend our trust legislation. And just so you all know, I, I do this for a living. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer. I do a lot of estate planning and I create, draft a lot of trusts. So I've been involved in this committee as well. And that's maybe one of the reasons why I tend to carry this legislation. So uh, it is rather lengthy uh, at times, and uh, but it's basically clarifies several things that can be an issue uh, later on. And this is why uh, companies are moving here. We've got great protections for the trustee. We've got great protections for the beneficiary. And so we tend to hit these on an annual basis to make sure we're taking care of that. And that's why people want to be here with these documents and these trusts uh, because of the uh, laws that we put in place to make sure all those parties as it relates to a trust uh, are protected. So just a few of the things, and if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to answer those, but just sort of the, some of the mundane things that this does uh, that we can get into any of the details you want. Uh, for instance, um, it clarifies if a distribution is made in error, that that beneficiary has to pay it back right? They don't get it if it was paid in error. That was not in the code uh, before. It clarifies that all trustees and qualified beneficiaries of a non-charitable irrevocable trust uh, can unanimously agree to modify or terminate that trust. Sometimes you have to terminate a trust and you have to go to court to do that. If everyone's in agreement, including the trustees, the beneficiaries, et cetera, you can do that by what's called a non-judicial settlement, where you don't have to incur the fees to go to court as long as all parties are in agree. It also clarifies that if there's any debts that the trusts owes, 
that the actual beneficiaries aren't personally responsible for those debts. Believe it or not, there's been some instances where creditors try to make a claim that a beneficiary is not subject to the debts because it's not their money yet, right? They're the beneficiary at some trigger point later on in time. So those are the type of things this legislation uh, addresses, Mr. Chairman. I'll be glad to take any questions, but, uh, but I do believe that this is uh, a good bill, and I would ask for your support. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Uh, my my dream is to come back in the next life as a trust fund baby. <laughs> and, uh, okay, uh, Representative Barrett, you're. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the sponsor, I, I just, as an expert in this field, I just wanted to know if you could explain to the committee the rule against perpetuities <laughs> and, and and perhaps how it applies, this bill applies to that. Oh, Lord, you're going, you're going back to law school there. <laughs> just in case Garrett. anyone wants to know about the rule against perpetuities, just know you can't keep something in trust really forever. That. That's it. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? I've got a question on the bill. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 I'll oppose the same. Bill passes. House uh, Bill 1185 is going to uh, Commerce Full. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. And, and last, committee. Last bill on the calendar is House Bill 1181 by Representative Garrett. We need a motion and a second. It was hard to get last time. I got a motion and a second this time. <laughs> got a motion and a second this time. And it uh, looks like you have an amendment on this one, too. I, I, I do, Mr. Chairman, uh, but let me let me make it known. This is the Tennessee. We need a motion and a second on the amendment. Second on the amendment, yeah. Struggling with my motion wow. and second today, this Mr. This is Chairman. a tough crowd. Go ahead. This is the Tennessee plenty. Information Protection Act that I have been working on for probably the past two years. Um, and we are, um, and, I've, and I very much uh, appreciate this committee's work, this committee's uh, appreciation for this legislation. It's going to address some of the things that was in, I believe, uh, Representative Fritz legislation uh, that deals with this space and how you can protect your identity as you travel the internet. And there are a few things um, that we're still working on with the business world that we've met today. So, um, and I have promised to work as diligently as I possibly can with them to reach hopefully an agreement where you all won't be hearing about this anymore. Uh, so uh, with all of that explanation, I'd like to roll this a week so we can properly get the amend, amended amendment before the committee that will hopefully make the bill, Mr. Chairman. So. And, and I'm sure there's no objection to that. <laughs> so without objection, let's roll one week. And thank you for that explanation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, and that wraps everything up. I think we have... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, we have uh, still have House Bill 1434. He, uh, he's not here, so we're going to roll it uh, next week. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. We'll, we'll take a, a short recess and see if you can get a hold of him then. And again, two, well, two, two minute recess. Two minute recess. Without objection. We have to wait two minutes. We had a two-minute warning a minute ago. We have to wait two minutes.
Okay, we're going back into session. We've gone through our two-minute warning. And uh, do we have a motion on the bill? House Bill, uh, I'm sorry, House Bill of 1434 by Mitchell. Got a motion and a second. Motion and a second. Okay. <laughs> they are hard to come by today, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> House Bill 1434, uh, Representative Mitchell, I don't see an amendment, and you're recognized on the bill. Uh, thank you, committee. I appreciate y'all waiting for me. Uh, this is just a bill. The ticket situation uh, in America and in our state is out of hand. You know, I'm sure you're hearing from a lot of constituents, you know, when they're able to try to buy a ticket, you know, the ticket vendors are, you know, dynamic pricing running up the cost of a ticket where almost where an average citizen can't afford to go to a sporting event or a, or a music concert anymore. All this is to do is to stop these ticket vendors by capping the amount they can put as a service fee on top of the ticket. Uh, you know, I've got an example here of a ticket I just purchased. It's a 36 percent up fee, service fee, on top of the ticket price. So, you know, these folks are paying several hundred dollars for a ticket, then they're charging $150 more on top of that for a ticket. So I've set this in this bill at 15%. You know, I've, I've asked the industry many times, you know, if that's not a good number for you, please tell me what a good number is, and I'm not getting that. So. I'm wanting to go ahead with the 15% and make it more fair to the consumer out there that they know what they're buying. Most of the time, you know, these concert tickets, especially if it's a, a sporting event or a concert that's in high demand, you have to get online and you have to select right then. If you don't select right then, you're not going to get the ticket. So if you select an area of the concert that's going to be, be you know, a more expensive ticket, you know, they've got the percentage that they're charging on that ticket. So either you can pay 30, 36% on a $100 ticket or you're going to be paying 36% on a $500 ticket. Well, once you see that, once you get it in the cart, you know, you can't go back and reselect or you're not going to go. You're not going to see that event. Uh, so, if the consumer in this state knows that they're only going to be paying 15 percent at most above that ticket price, I think it's fair to the consumer in this state. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Was that a Taylor Swift ticket that you had? Bruce Springsteen, sir. I'm a little older. <laughs> I'm a little older. <laughs> okay, a uh, question. One question I had. Uh, what about other vendors? I mean, can you not, are there not enough other vendors out there to where you could say, hey, I don't want to pay this fee and I'm going I'm to buy it through a different vendor? Well, see, that, that's where it's even worse. You know, right now, there's pretty much just one vendor out there. Then the secondary market, it, the, the price uh, fees are even higher. You know, this, the 36%, was from a secondary vendor. Uh, from the primary vendor, they're in the 20s. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions for the sponsor? Uh, Chairman Vaughn. Thank you, Chairman Powers and Representative. Um, I've got to get, I got to stay on the same free market track that I've been on with my interweb friends today is that, again, and, and I understand that, that, uh, that the music performance industry has been, is being controlled uh, right now uh, pretty, pretty solidly by the single player. I know that there's some minor ones that are in there. But again, if they're still filling up, they're still filling up those stadiums. They're still filling up the, the concert venues. And so I'm not going to be able to vote for your bill today. I, I too, dislike dynamic pricing with the best of them whenever I try to get a hotel room uh, when my spouse is going to stay up here with me and I get dynamic pricing and I've paid crazy prices for the same room 
just dependent. It's it's a frustrating industry th phenomena that they've discovered. Yeah. I, I can't I can't support your bill because of free market principles, but I understand your frustration and I share them. So I know that'll won't go very far, <laughs> but today that's what I'm offering. <laughs> Representative Mitchell. Yeah, I agree. You know, same thing in that industry, in the hotel and hospitality industry. When they know they have the consumer over the barrel, they take advantage of the consumer. You know, if if the one player would just tell the people up front what their fees were going to be, it, it would be better for the consumer. The consumer doesn't get to find out until it's too late. And you know that I just that's unfair to you know the citizens of this state okay oh well, I have a question on that yes when sir. you mentioned that, would would it be better to come back and and do a a disclosure uh bill and and have them to make them disclose that amount uh prior to you doing that yeah yeah i'd be I'd be more than happy you know if that's the will of the committee that you know you you're you don't want to put a cap on it. I think, you know, something needs to be done in this industry to send a message that, you know, we recognize what they're doing to the consumer in this state, and, and we're not going to tolerate it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Faison, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Sponsor, the, this year has been a lot of legislation that deals with taking away local control. You've been in the heat of that argument pretty hardcore, and I'm a little confused. We are telling locals, venues such as TPAC, how they can sell tickets, and the big government on the hill is telling them how to sell. And so I'm a little confused with the signals you're sending me right now. So I'm trying to justify that in my mind why it's all right the legislature for us to set this in your mind, but it's not all right for other things. So can you help me understand where we're going with this taking local control away? Well, let's be honest. Representative I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's, let's, you're talking about a minute fraction. If you want to break this down to TPAC compared to what Ticketmaster is doing in this country and to our citizens in this state, and I mean, the local control of that one one venue, you know, compared to what they're doing to your constituents and my constituents, to compare that to taking over all the pretty shiny objects in Nashville is uh, uh, quite a big difference. And Chairman Faison. So in effect, what you're saying, it's okay to steal one grape but not 10 grapes. Is, is that what you're saying here, Mr. Representative? Uh, no, what, Representative Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What I'm saying is if, uh, if, you, if you break it, you bought it. Uh. Okay, uh, Representative Sparks. Oh, man, I hate to play devil's advocate because I'm about the free market too, but there is a problem. It sounds like um, we are a music city. We've got a lot of folks coming in here. Um, I'm going to say it again, you know, it's a Hail Mary pass. I say move this to full committee to have more discussion, and then y'all can kill it there. Okay. <laughs> Representative Mitchell, uh, you have a comment? Thank you, Representative Sparks. That's a fine idea. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Vaughn. I think I've got something that may help everyone. As if the sponsor would uh, agree to roll this and put a, an amendment on it that changed, got away from capping what the fees are, but merely make it a, tran a transparency bill to where there's disclosure of these fees before you have to, before you have to buy that, then I, I'm okay with that, but that, that's not controlling the market. So I, that's what I would suggest to the sponsor if that's what he would want to entertain. Representative Mitchell. And, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I agree. And I think if that is seen out there and the consumer starts seeing that, then all of our phones are going to ring a little bit more. And I, I think the other piece of other part of this legislation will short come shortly thereafter. So please, I ask the committee, please roll this bill one week. Okay. Uh, motion roll. Did, Leader Camper, did you want to speak first? Or? I, I was just going to be an angel advocate for the bill, but oh, okay. we... <laughs> 
<laughs> we could roll it. Yes. <laughs> you are an angel, though, anyway. All right, yes, uh, motion roll it one week, and without objection, we're going to roll it one week. Thank you, Representative. Th thank you, committee. See you okay, I think we are uh, wrapping it up for the. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? All right, adjourned. Thank you all for coming.